watching Fishing with Gary Sepp. And we normally open on a lake, but today we're at Bubbling Ponds State Fish Hatchery. And we're learning all about the Florida strain largemouth bass that are all going into Roosevelt. They're gonna be growing up to these jumbo sizes that we're gonna be catching. We've already been starting to catch some of these at three and four pounds, but we have Sarah Taylor with us today and we have Andy Clark from the Game and Fish Department. So what is the difference between a Florida strain largemouth and a northern strain largemouth? Yeah, it's really just um, conditions that they, that they look for, that they favor. So the Florida strain, uh, they just have a different, I don't want to call it a personality, but it is just a different uh, way they do things, how they feed, how they look at forage, how they look at habitat. Uh, and they're just a, a little bit more of a wild, again, that's kind of a, a broad term, but they're just, um, they, they like, you know, a little bit more you know, grass, structure type stuff. They like stable conditions and warmer, warmer, uh, you know, water temperatures oh, wow. too. Um, not as tolerant to cold, cold water temperatures. They tend to live a little bit longer um, and they grow a little bit slower. Um, and they just are, are more selective on how they feed. So it's really, um, again, they're all largemouth bass. Right. So, but you're talking strains. So these are, these are really, genetic differences on that genetic level um, that they just have the characteristics that most anglers want. I mean, they grow a little bit bigger, they, they, they last a little bit longer, and, and they're, they're more challenging. So. Right. so how many fish do you, fingerlings or fry, have, do you think we put in in Roosevelt Lake already? We're, we're close to two million between this, the, the fry, the sack fry, and um, you know, not quite fingerling size, but they were pretty close. They were uh, advanced fingerlings uh, into Roosevelt Lake. So we're, we're getting pretty close to two million that we've put in the last three years at Roosevelt Lake. And from what you're telling me, it's, it's already paying dividends. So when was the first stocking that we actually had when they were just little baby fries? Yeah, 2014, um, spring, early summer, we got those into Roosevelt. You know, and then uh, I've been able to do that with, with angler donations. We've been able, we've been able to uh, buy more uh, the last few years and keep adding to that, that brood stock. So again, it, um, and you'll probably ask this question later, but you know, at, at what point do you get the perfect recipe, right? Do we want 100% Florida strain? Do we want, you know, 100% Northern strain? Or what we really want is some mixture. And so you have those characteristics of, of both those strains that work for the given water. So right now, due to genetic studies that we've looked at, the fish at Roosevelt are about 50-50. So okay. the, you look at their genes, they're about 50% nor, northern strain, about 50% Florida strain. So we really want uh, to move that needle towards 60-70% Florida strain. If we can get to 100% in, in Roosevelt, that'd be great, but we really the main goal is to move that needle genetically. So if we keep stocking, keep, keep putting in pure Floridas, then hopefully that genetic makeup for the whole lake will get somewhere around 60, 70%, maybe higher, you know, that we'll just have to monitor that. And then theoretically that will grow bigger fish and we'll start knocking on that, that state record, break the state record, and that's what we're after. So when we first put those in there, say a million fry, the first initial stocking on that, how fast do those things grow? Yeah. I mean, how fast can they grow? I right. mean, in a you know, under ideal conditions, so in Roosevelt's pretty close to, to ideal, um, they're going to grow about uh, eight, eight, nine inches their first year, and then they'll hit about 12, 13 inches their second year, um, and then typically around 16, 17 inches their third year. So, um, and that's the northern strain. The Florida strain are a little bit slower. And again, if the conditions are perfect, you know, Roosevelt, it fluctuates quite a bit, you know, and so, and it's, we're been in a drought year, so um, Roosevelt may not be growing them as fast as it could, um, but in general, that's the, you know, about four years, three, four years, they're at that four pounds where we, we kind of really start prizing, prizing those. Foods. I don't know, our population of bass in the Roosevelt right now have increased so much this mm, year, because yeah. I was born in this state and I've been fishing Roosevelt for 50, 50, 55 years. And you're showing your oh age. Oh my gosh, yeah, showing my age, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, I look like I'm 40, but I'm really, yeah. I'm really 60. No. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, the pr product that's coming out of Roosevelt this, this year, yeah. I mean, we're having 20 pound stringers and, not, and lots of 18s, yeah. 16, 17, 18 pound stringers coming out of Roosevelt right now. I mean, 
and it hasn't happened before that much. Right. Last year we were getting maybe a 16 or a 15, but a lot of 12s and 13s. Right. And right. the year before, a little bit lower. Yeah. So that's when you guys stepped in and the people were saying, hey, yeah. you know what? What are we going to do? We need something. I'm sure you at the round tables and stuff like that. Right. You heard about all the cries from all the people, and now they're stepping up. You and bet. they're actually doing this job and raising these fish to put in there to yeah. make this a, a big trophy bass lake. And yeah, we were, we were super fortunate. Um, you know, Fish Chief uh, Chris Cantrell had uh, some relationships with folks in Florida in that time frame when, when you know, a lot of, a lot of the, the fishing was, it was pretty, pretty poor. It really, you know, kind of dropped off at Roosevelt. We were getting a lot of complaints, you know, and, the, and Chief Cantrell went and made the deal with Florida. We got some of those bass, wow. you know, at no cost. And it was like, man, we don't, we don't really, we're not as concerned about how many survive. It just, it's just good to get you know, an infusion of new genetics into that lake. And now, from what from what anglers are telling us, that's that's been, so it's really been a team effort from from the chief all the way down through in various states and whatnot, and, and folks here at the hatcheries and, and all over. It's It's been a really great effort, uh, regional programs as well. So. I know when I came to visit you and I was at Pleasant and stopped by and we did a live feed with your, one of your riders, Nick Walters, uh, uh, I didn't realize there's so many people inside your office. Oh, I mean, boy, it's huge, yeah, yeah. you know, and we got to talk to Mark, uh, one of the head biologists and yeah. water conservationists and stuff. And that was really neat yeah, that yeah. they really care about all this stuff that's happening right, in, right. in our lakes. I mean, they're constantly testing all this stuff with water quality and, yeah. and Mark's fish Mark's been stocking. working really hard. Oh, yeah. he does. Yeah, well, lately. I mean, talking to him, he's like, oh my gosh, he's everywhere, you know. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't know, is there anything else we could do with the Florida strain? I mean, it sounds like you guys got a long project with you and Sarah yeah. uh, raising these things. It, and it's a brand new program. You know, we're inside of three years now, and, and uh, there's just a lot of things that Sarah and her crew and, and folks at the hatcheries have figured out, Jeffrey, you know, that, that leads the, the, the program. You know, we're really learning a lot of things, and we're making a lot of headway. Um, it, we just continue to need need support, funding. Uh, we need room. There's a lot of things we need to make this this program go to the next level and and really get the type of numbers of Florida strain in because you know. Roosevelt's one of going to be one of our hog waters, our trophy bass waters, but you know, it's Apache, Saguaro, Canyon, all those already grow big bass, but we want to help those populations too. And then other, other lakes that we designate as trophy waters, you know, whether it be Havasu or, you know, uh, some of the lakes down south, Aravaca, Pina Blanca, those already have Florida strain in them. Man, let's stock some more in there, some fingerlings in there as part of the brood, you know, from our brood stock and really infuse new gen genes in there. And let's have six, eight trophy bass fisheries. That's wow. what we're really hoping for. So what is the program that we're trying, you're trying to do here with, our, with the bass, Florida bass? So um, we are bringing in fish that have been feed trained by the personnel at the Florida Bass Conservation Center. And we're going to use these fish that are feed trained grow them up to become a brood stock so that we can spawn our own Florida bass, strain bass here um, in Arizona and then stock them into the lakes and rivers. So that was one of the things that folks that I was thinking about. How do you how do you have fish that are in this hatchery that are from eating pellets like the rainbow trout? How are we going to put them into the to the lakes? These are going to be the parents the of parents. the fish going to the lakes. Okay. So, so explain how these fish you know, in these ponds and stuff, in the raceways we've seen. How are they going, and you can't strip the eggs out of largemouth bass. I've learned that from uh, other people. Mm -hmm. And explain how they get those fish to lay their eggs in a pond on a mat or something like uh, that. Yeah, um, our goal is to try to mimic what they're doing at the Florida Bass Conservation Center. And, and they use uh, a coconut fiber mat. They put in a raceway and each male selects a mat, and then that's their mat to guard. So we're gonna try to mimic what they would do naturally, how a male selects a nest out in the wild, and we're gonna try to do that with them in a raceway. So they'll have their own mat, and the female will come by and choose the male, and they'll do their spawn and lay eggs on those mats, and then we'll be able to remove that mat and then um, care for the eggs in a separate tank. And then eventually those when they hatch, they'll get put into a pond and uh, the fry will eat the natural food that the pond produces. And once there's no more food in that pond for those fry, 
then we'll stock them out into the lakes so that they can continue to eat because we don't want to lose those fish to feed training. So they'll have to be really small fish after you raise them from an egg, you put them in a the pond, they'll have to be really small to stock into our lakes? They'll probably be one inch at the one biggest. One inch? Yeah. So you're hoping to get them up to one inch? And stay. Yes. They'll survive a lot more at one inch instead of Mm -hmm. you know, a sixteenth of an inch, because I, I was yes. there when they stocked them before and they were just so small and they came came in a box by FedEx. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny, so, you know, mm -hmm. uh, working at the post office for 47 years, you know, it's like, wow, but I get fish, I used to get fish through through the post office. That's how time. we got most of our brood stock here. Yeah, too. so yeah. it's pretty good. So, um, let's see, what else? Um, so these are, ponds like this is where we're going to be raising these Florida Yes. Uh, uh, bass and stuff like that. So once they hatch, um, they're going to drop from the eggs and then it'll take a few days for them to swim up from the bottom of the tank. Once they swim up, then we'll move them out to a pond where there's zooplankton and natural food for them to eat that's small enough for them to eat. And they'll feed for about a month before they get stocked out into whatever lake um, is designated for them. So is it is it true that the fish will grow according to the size of the environment that they're in? Yeah, Is bass need true? a lot of space and um, they need a lot of forage. So if there's plenty of food and space, they're going to grow like crazy. So, so. Um, when do, now how old are the bass that we saw? And he's, they're going to be showing this while we're talking. Okay. So how old are those fish that we saw in the raceways, those, the biggest ones? How the many biggest, years and how big are those? Um, those fish came in 2015. Okay. So um, they're three-year-old three fish, year yes. And they've been um, crowded in raceways. So they're not growing, say, like the Florida strain they got put in Roosevelt, who had plenty of food and space. Oh, yeah. So they're, our broodstock are growing much slower than um, a fish in the wild would. So will those, will those fish that we saw, those little 10 inches, will they be able to lay eggs at 10 inches long or do they have to get a lot bigger? Um, they think? probably need a little more body mass than they have right now and they definitely need space. So we have um, a program started. We've got some funding that we're trying to put together with uh, multiple different sources so that we can build a, a a building that will have raceways that we can spawn those fish in and spread them out so they have more space to grow and be productive. So we're just trying to build up Roosevelt Lake. Folks, I can I can tell testify to the fish that we're catching out at Roosevelt Lake. Uh, some of the ones I caught earlier in the year in February and March were 16, 16 half inches and they're pushing three pounds. We've caught, never caught so many three and four pounders at Roosevelt, this many. Hmm. And there was a lot of them. So uh, last week we had a 20 pound limit, over a 20 pound limit for five fish. That That's huge. Yeah. Now those might not be Florida's, but they're big. Yeah. And I know personally of three people that have caught bass over 11 pounds. Hmm. Okay, so Roosevelt is, gonna be, is going to be a, a very big trophy lake hmm. eventually. Yeah. And it's a, getting a good start right now. So all of you out there that are fishing Roosevelt, you know, at this right now in the spring, it's it's May, first of May, the top water bites going on. And a lot of those fish are two, three pounds, you know, and I'm like I said, I saw I had one fish that was 16, 16 half inches and it had a it had a gizzard shed in it like six, seven inches long mm -hmm. sticking out of its tongue. So a mouth. So they're they're experiencing their food chain is making them grow mm -hmm. huge. So by being in this environment in the raceways until you get them in the ponds it's going to be a little slower. Yes, right? yes, definitely slower. They don't have the space right. and they are eating pellets instead of live feed. Okay. So will we ever go to live feed, do you think, or just keep on pet feeding them pellets? Um, yeah, we will eventually. They'll need that. Um, they can, they can continue to eat pellets, but they do need live feed for their, to stay healthy. The pellets don't have all the nutrition that the live feed can provide for them. So, I personally want to thank you and all of my people that I meet out bass fishing and the seminars we do. I want to thank Andy Clark and Sarah Taylor for all the hard work. I didn't realize it was this hard of and temperamental with these fish, how temperamental these Floridas are. Because when storms come in and they're in the lake, oh my gosh, they can't catch them. But now I got a first-hand view of how these fish react and how when you walk up, they don't want to, they're real skittish and stuff like that. So. 
high strain uh, Floridas. But thank you guys for all the hard work you do. All right, thank you for watching Fishing with Gary Semft. We appreciate it a lot, and we'll see you on the next.